All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome again. I hope everyone had a good break, a shot of coffee for the last session of the day. Um, uh, I think when everyone goes back to work next week, you'll have found yourself listening to very interesting talks. But maybe the most memorable thing this week is there's beer and wine during lunch. <laughs> How cool is that? Anyway, uh, is this working? I'll do it like that. So my name is Stan Polfleet. I am a tech evangelist at New Relic. Um, New Relic is a company and we help customers to provide monitoring and observability in their complex workloads. I joined New Relic about uh, six months ago. I was founder and CEO of a company called CoScale. And at CoScale, we were doing performance monitoring for containers and microservices. So it was really an exciting journey for us to join New Relic. And I'm proud to here today to talk a little bit about New Relic and how we can help you understand what's happening in your container environment, in your uh, EKS environment. So when we talk to customers, everyone is excited about Kubernetes. We all see the value that Kubernetes brings to our lives, you know, with the promise of building our software companies or making our software companies more agile. You know, we want to be able to scale out our workloads to the millions of users we have. We want to be able to shift our workloads from one availability zone to another. Um, we want to release new features, new products. We want to deliver value quicker to the market. So that's really the, the promise that Kubernetes is, is bringing us. But this Kubernetes promised land is far out. So how do we get there? There are many challenges on the road towards the Kubernetes promised land. So I want to talk about a few things. You know, what should we be thinking about when building our Kubernetes promised land? Well, let's start with a first a stable Kubernetes cluster. And so there are many layers in our Kubernetes environment. There are many aspects. And frankly, this is quite scary if you think about it. We have our underlying infrastructure. We have our users. They're demanding more and more from us as software companies. We want to make sure they have a good experience when they use our mobile apps, when they use our websites. We have our containers deployed in various AWS regions. Um, our applications are running on top of that. So this is really a complex landscape. So how do we make sure we understand what's happening in this ecosystem of, you know, different technologies that we're uh, adopting? So luckily we have vendors like AWS who actually help us. And EKS is a good example of how AWS is helping us to make or ta to take away some of the pain of managing a Kubernetes environment. So at New Relic, we help our customers by providing visibility into the applications that are running on these complex distributed Kubernetes environments. And in order to get visibility with the New Relic platform, there are three basic steps. The first step is deploying kube state metrics. And kube state metrics is a service that exposes metrics about the various Kubernetes objects we're interested in. The second thing we're going to do during this session is we're going to deploy what we call the New Relic metadata injection. And the metadata injection helps other products to understand in what container are we running, what namespace, which pod is this. So this gives a lot more context to all of the metrics and all of the data we're capturing. And then finally, we're going to deploy a daemon set that contains the new relic agent. So now, what I would like to do today is I would like, you, I would like to take you through this process, uh, show you how you deploy the new relic environment. Next, we're going to look at a real life application. And then finally, we're going to play a little game. So let's first start with our um, new relic installation. 
The first step we want to do is we have an EKS cluster. So let's have a look if the cluster is up and running. So we have our EKS cluster up and running here. Um, I've deployed a simple application on this. So we have one pod running that is serving a small game, as you can see here. Now, what we want to do is we want to first install or deploy kubestate metrics. And this is really easy to do. So we're going to use kubectl, 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 whatever you prefer, to deploy kubestate metrics. So when we do this command, we're deploying our kubestate metrics to the cluster. We can verify this by looking if our kubestate metrics service was deployed. And as we can see here, we now have a kubestate metrics um, part running. We, we see it two times because actually in this cluster I have two nodes. So that makes sense. So this is the first step, a very easy step. The next thing we want to do is we want to deploy our metadata injection. And the metadata injection is basically a webhook. So every time a new pod is deployed in our cluster, we will inject relevant context in that pod that New Relic can use to provide more information about what's happening in your environment. So let's go ahead and do this. Let's go ahead and deploy the metadata injection. And then what we'll see now is that we have, uh, there is like a setup job. So this is basically installing our webhook. And then we have a pod running that is responsible for injecting the metadata into each of our pods. The next step is to deploy our New Relic agent. Um, before we do that, let's have a look at the YAML file. So when we're going to deploy our New Relic agent, we're going to create a service account, a cluster role, cluster role binding. But what's more important, we're going to create a daemon set. I mean, similar to AWS, they want to make your life easier in managing Kubernetes. We also want to make your life easy. So you define a daemon set, the New Relic agent will be automatically deployed on all of your nodes. And there is a little bit of configuration here. For example, you can give your cluster a name and you provide your New Relic license key. In this case, we're getting our license key from a Kubernetes secret, which I already defined in the cluster. So let's go ahead and let's apply this YAML file. All right, so right now, we should see the New Relic infrastructure daemon, or in this case, the pod. And if we look at the daemon sets, we should see that we have a daemon set running. We have two um, pods running, so that's uh, all looking very good. So let's now move to our New Relic interface. And this is something I am particularly very excited about. Um, at New Relic, we have developed something we call the Kubernetes Cluster Explorer. And a Kubernetes environment can become very complex, but let's first start with this simple example. So what you see here is a view of your Cluster Explorer, uh, of your Kubernetes cluster. In this case, like I mentioned earlier, we have two nodes in our cluster. And we can see that we, these small hexagons here, we have several, several pods running on our nodes. So what I can do easily is, on the left-hand side, I can filter on any of the deployments, uh, the namespaces, or the nodes I have in my cluster. For example, in this case, I've deployed my gaming front-end. So what I can do is I can see, okay, on which node is this running? Because I might be running a complex, large cluster, so I would like to know where are the current paths for this deployment running. So that's a very simple example. I showed you in two minutes how you get it up and running, but let's have a look at a more complex, more real life example. So this is a Kubernetes cluster that has nine nodes. Each slice of the pie represents a node. Each hexagon represents a pod running on any of these nodes. Now, if you move towards the center of the circle, you will see pods and the containers that are having problems. This is indicated by the colors over there. So let's have a look. For example, what I can do is I can zoom into a specific deployment. I can say, hmm, I'm interested, where are currently my order status pods running? So if I filter on it, I can see that we have pods running on five nodes. 
I can also see that all of them are marked in yellow, so something is going on. So if I click on any of these parts here, I get more details in this side pane. And this side pane shows me that this part is in the warning state. I can actually drill down deeper and analyze the alert in more details, but what we can see happening here is that this part or this container is consuming a lot of memory. So the blue line represents our memory consumption. The yellow line represents the resource request that we asked to Kubernetes. And the red line is the memory limit. So and as we can see here, we're running against our memory limit. And this is a typical problem we see often at customers. We're often running against the capacity limits of our Kubernetes environments. So it's important to keep track of these metrics and of course to alert on them. Now, what's also pretty nice is that when you're looking at your Kubernetes cluster, of course you want to understand how are my applications doing. You know, what is the performance of the services running in these pods? And this is what we can see at the bottom of the screen here. So we have an overview of the transaction time or the response time and the throughput of the service running in this pod. Now, if you want to get more details, you can easily zoom into it and you can inspect the application in more detail. You can look at, you know, bytecode instrumentation. You can look at distributed tracing and others. I'm not going to touch uh, upon this during this session. All right. So this is a, a more real life example of a Kubernetes cluster. When I was preparing this talk, I was thinking about how can I share with the audience the pain some of our customers feel when they don't have the right monitoring in place? And I figured, why not ask the audience to participate and try to break my EKS cluster? So that's what we're going to do right now. I know this is a really bad idea. We're going to try it anyway. So what I would like to do first is I'm going to set up a horizontal pod autoscaler. So, autoscaling has been mentioned a few times today. Uh, for those of you who don't know how to do this with kubectl, so you can create an autoscale, a horizontal pod autoscaler by using this command. So you do a kubectl autoscale deployment. Uh, my deployment is called game frontend. You want to trigger on a certain metric. So in this case, I want to trigger when the CPU load goes above 50%. I want to scale my environment. I want to ha have at least one replica, one pod, and I want to set a maximum of 10. So let's go ahead and create that autoscaler for us. So this is available in EKS, so you can do this uh, yourself and play with it. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to try out or we're going to play a little game. So there is a little game running in my EKS cluster and it basically is like this button. And you can push this button and then it will go to our EKS cluster, do a very complex calculation and return back to the front end. Um, so that what I would like all of you to do now is take out your mobile phone and scan this QR code or use the bit.ly link. And I'm challenging you, try to break my EKS cluster. Now, I, w I was preparing this for 100 people, and I think there are about 500 people in the room today. So I'm going to feel the pain that our customers feel. All right. If you have the game open, push the button and keep pushing it. You will be able to push the button every second. Let's have a look. We have our horizontal pod autoscaler running. Currently, we're consuming about 1% in CPU load. So I challenge you, keep pushing until we see it going up. And in a minute, if everyone keeps pushing the button, we should actually see this value go up and we should see our cluster autoscale. Is that working for everyone? The link is not working. And the QR code, was that working? Let me show it back. Oh yeah, it's a capital I, yeah, sorry. It's a capital I, not an L. Let me give you some more time to get that. 
Who has the game on their phone? All right, so I can see the red buttons. Keep pushing, keep pushing. I challenge you. I'm going to, oh, here we go. Uh-oh. All right. So we can see that our autoscaler has detected that the, the, the load is too high on our, our environment. So uh, let's, uh, let's have a look. How many pods do we have running right now? Oh, here we go. We now have four pods running instead of one. Let me quickly test if our app is still responsive. Uh-oh. All right, everyone did a very good job because it's, it's very slow right now. <laughs> so this is great. Um, I expected this. I knew 500 people in the room would be too much. Um, the good thing is we have our monitoring in place. So as you can see here, we have our metrics. They're shooting through the roof. Our CPU load, our memory consumption is going through the roof. Um, the number of containers, as you can see here in the yellow, is moving up. So our autoscaler is working. Um, if we go back to our cluster explorer, we'll see that we have four pods running right now. So we have three pods running on this node, another pod running on that node. So our horizontal pod autoscaler is working. It seems I was able to handle the load somewhat. And New Relic is giving me visibility into what's happening uh, at the moment. <laughs> so this was just a quick teasing demo. Um, we have an AWS quick start for EKS available as of now. Um, the EWS quick starts, not sure if everyone is familiar with this, it's basically an easy way to get various AWS services up and running. So there is a quick start for EKS, basically a cloud formation template that allows you to get EKS up and running, including New Relic. So that's easy uh, to use. The source code of this very exciting game and the steps I took are available at my GitHub repo. We have a small boot uh, right in the back of that room. So please come talk to us if you want to know more about the Kubernetes Cluster Explorer and our other capabilities uh, during the happy hour. Thank you.